Hello, 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 and good evening to each and every one of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to an exciting Bible class tonight. I'm Bishop Van Sharp. I'm the pastor and founder of Newness from Life Christian Center. Oh, a great, great group of men and women that God has joined together for his glory and for his purpose. But tonight we're so honored that you have taken out the time of your busy, busy schedule to tune in tonight, to watch, to hear, to learn, to grow, to be empowered, to be even the more that man and woman of God that God wants you to be. So tonight we are honored to have you and I want you to get on that phone, make those connections with those people that are in your circle and those that know you and those that embrace the wisdom, the knowledge of God's word. I want you to call them, text them, email them, tweet them. I want you to awaken them that they might be awakened even the more in the spirit. And we as alert men and women of God can take territory from the enemy. This is not the time to give place to the devil. This is the time to take territory from the devil and walk as men and women of light. Thank God for you tonight. I want you to hit that like button. Once you hit that share button, once you hit that subscribe button, don't just let those buttons be there on your phone. Use them appropriately. Come on. You know how to get bad news out. Let's share good news with people that we love and care about. So come on. Let's do it tonight. Tonight is a blessed night. I hope you had a blessed day at work. I hope you had a blessed day at school. I hope you had a blessed day at home or wherever you've been today. I hope you are walking in the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and added no sorrow. Remember, God said it and he shall do it. Whatever God has promised to do for you and I, we can count on it. We can rely on it and we can expect the great. That's right. We can expect the great to happen, expect great things to happen for us, to us and upon us and among us. And whatever we touch we expect it to prosper. Well, I'm telling you, it's good to be here tonight to study God's holy word. We're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. Again, amen. We're excited about being on Facebook Live each and every Tuesday night, still here teaching the word each and every Thursday night, sharing the word. And Sunday morning, we're back and in the newness of life fellowship. Amen. We're back in the building. That's right. We're back in the building. This past Sunday was our first time back. Had a great time looking forward to what God's going to do next as we gather together. But again, right now, currently, we're having a six o'clock phase uh, book live time. Amen. So this Sunday evening, again, we'll be back here on Facebook live. Again, we're working things out for you, trying to make sure that you get the most out of these moments. Let's pray and get in the word of God tonight. Father, Thank you for the wisdom, for the enlightenment, for the impartation that you by your Holy Spirit will release tonight. Thank you for thinking through my mind and speaking through my lips a relevant life changing word that will elevate and crystallize what you're doing in the lives of your people. We count it a blessing to hear your word and we thank you that the entrance of it give it light and gives understanding to the simple. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's dive right into the Bible. Get your Bibles out, get your iPad out, get you something to write with or to take notes. Many of the things that I'm going to share with you tonight, amen, due to technology, if you're watching this on, <clears throat> excuse me, on Facebook Live, you will see some of these scriptures pop up on your screen. However, you're watching it later on on YouTube, you won't see the scriptures but I'm so glad you can rewind and go back over it and hear it again and again and again. Remember, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, let us go back into part two of a message that we're teaching entitled Rejecting Wrong Words and Receiving Right Words. We're talking about rejecting wrong words and receiving right words. Now let's begin to think about that. That's what we're talking about. Many of us need to know that our lives 
can be different, can be changed, can be going from glory to glory, can go from glory to glory if we receive the right words and reject those ones that are wrong, but open our heart to those ones that are right. Remember, Satan, through his subtlety, the serpent was more subtle than any other creature, and the devil got the serpent to hiss at the woman and give her words that were not in line with the command of God. So in the book of Genesis, the Bible speaks of the fact that the woman begins to have a conversation with the serpent and she tells the serpent that, hey, the Lord hath commanded us not to touch nor to eat of that tree, which really wasn't what God said, not about touching it. Amen. Didn't want them to eat of it, but to make a long story short, she was beguiled through words. She should have rejected the words of the serpent and stayed open to the words of God. But instead she received the words of the serpent and it threw everything off course, off kilter. We understand that when God began to talk to Adam, Adam had already confessed, hey, I saw that I was naked and we hid ourselves because we were afraid. And God asked them the question, who told you? that you was naked. Amen. In other words, who told you were naked that that you have you partook of that fruit or that tree of the knowledge of good and even of course, amen, we know that Adam began to blame the woman. So we understand that the key to our lives thriving and moving forward is are we rejecting the wrong words and receiving the right words. When a person receives you, that means they're what? Receiving your words. When a person rejects you, that means what? They're rejecting your word, words. So let's look at Proverbs 18 and 21 in the message translation. Proverbs 18 and 21. I'm reading this in the message translation. It says, words kill. Words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. See that? So he's saying words kill or words can give life. The wrong words kill us, destroy our spirit, destroy our lives, cause us to mess up. The right words, they give life. They help our lives to be fruitful. And God wants mankind wants us to be fruitful and to multiply. He wants us to be productive. So the key to this is rejecting wrong words and receiving right words. Shout out to Melinda Burke tonight. Uh, Vincent Bellamy is watching along with your lovely wife, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Appreciate knowing that you all are there. Shout out to Minister Danny and a shout out to all of NOLCC family. Glad to know you're watching. Listen, we're going to take you a little deeper than we did last time because this is part two. The word receive it as we're looking at it. I'm going to give you two basic Greek words that we're looking at the word receive it. And that's what we're talking about when we say receive it. One of these Greek words is the word spelled D-E-C-H-O-M-A-I. Decomay or decomay. And decomay means to accept, to take with the hand or to take hold of. It means to receive or grant access to. A visitor. It means to have intercourse or to have friendship. So when you receive the word, the word is really able to bear fruit in your life because it's like being a friend to you, having intercourse with you, knowing you and you knowing the word. It means to be hospitable, to give ear to, to give ear to, to embrace. When I talk about receiving the word, I'm talking about embracing it, giving ear to it, paying close attention to it. It means to make one's own. Receive means to make one's own. 
and it means to approve. It means to learn or to get. Have you ever been talking to somebody and they don't get it? And you're like, hey, and you're trying to explain, but they don't get it or they don't pay attention to what you're saying. They're not receiving. It also means to not reject. So we want to receive the right words, but we want to reject first the wrong ones. Jesus had to do it. And so do we. When Satan came with words that were not right, Jesus rejected those words. He rejected those words of trying to turn uh, stones into uh, rocks into bread. He rejected those words. He did not receive those words. Certain times when Jesus had to tell the devil, get behind me. In other words, get out of my face because I'm not receiving what you're saying. Let's also look at another Greek word. That's a verb that as we're talking about receiving is the Greek verb L-A-M-B-A-N-O. Lambano. L-A-M-B-A-N-O. And it means to get hold of, to accept, to take with the hand, to lay hold of or to take up and to carry away, to make one's own. When you receive this word, you got to receive the word and, and, and begin to say, this is what God said to me. You make it personal. It means to claim for oneself of that which when taken is not let go of. So when you when you take this word in, you're not to let go of. This past Sunday morning, amen, we preached a powerful message, amen, entitled handle it or handle your business. Powerful word, amen. Well, you got to keep that word, amen, and walk through all this week with it and master your, your life with it. We also preached a word on Sunday evening right here on Facebook Live, amen, called shut out the noise. Powerful word, amen. Well, that word is to help you win, help you have victory, help you overcome. Shout out to Mary Richardson, Linda Walston is watching, and Bishop Ronald Wayne Sharp, amen, is watching as well, amen. All right, listen, it means of that when taken is not let go of. It means to seize, to apprehend, to take by craft, or to catch, used of hunters or fishermen. Like a fisherman catches fish, he's taking it. He's receiving that catch. Well, we got to receive the word and to take possession of. It means, watch this, to regard anyone's power, rank, and external circumstances. See, this is why the enemy wants people not who are uh, rather who are not in the body of Christ, who are not saved to have a nice house, a nice car, a lot of money, because he then can make people think that whatever they say is right. And a Christian, he doesn't want a Christian to have a nice house. He doesn't want a Christian or a believer to have a nice car. He doesn't want a Christian or a believer to have a lot of money. Why? Because then people could say he don't know what he's talking about. He's broke. He ain't got nothing. He don't know what he's talking about. However, we who are spiritual, we don't match up whether or not a person is telling the truth based on nothing materialistic. We don't say, hey, that man knows what he's talking about because he got a nice house or that man knows what he's talking about because he got a lot of money. No, we're looking at it. Does it line up with the word of God? Because if it doesn't line up with the word of God, I'm going to reject it. I don't care if it's coming from a billionaire. I'm going to reject it. I don't care if it's coming from a trillionaire. I'm going to reject it because it's not the truth if it's not in line with the written word of God. And I'm going to receive it even if it's coming from a person who's riding a bicycle. If they are speaking in line with the word of God, I'm going to receive it. Y'all know in the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible speaks about a poor man used his wisdom and delivered the whole city. But many people rejected the, what the poor man had to say because he was a poor man. So the enemy wants oftentimes people who are saved 
to believe wrong or to think wrong. That's why we need to reject the wrong words and receive the right ones. Look at John 3, verses 30 through 34. John chapter 3, verses 30 through 34 says, he must increase. Now, I didn't give you this one last week. Looking at this, this is John the Baptist speaking about Jesus Christ. He said, he must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testified and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received it or received his testimony has set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent. Speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. In other words, John the Baptist understood that in order for people to go to their next dimension, that he had to decrease so that Jesus and the ministry of Jesus could increase. And he wanted people's hearts open to receive what Jesus had to say, because he knew that, hey, the one who's coming and speaking is speaking as one sent from above. He was not born in the earthly fashion like I was. So John is letting them know, hey, he's greater than me. He's greater than me. He's on a whole nother level. John wanted them to not reject God's counsel or God's wisdom by rejecting the words of Jesus or rejecting Jesus Christ. Because people had to believe that what Jesus was saying was the words of God. And you and I have to understand as preachers, as ministers of God, we are speaking on behalf of our heavenly father and we should be speaking God's word. Now think about it. There are people who are great motivational speakers who get paid all kinds of money for speaking and trying to motivate people, trying to inspire people. And oftentimes we have to understand that it does not deal with their eternal life. It does not deal basically with their morality. It just basically tells them how to get more money, tells them how to be what they call a success. But we need to understand that without God, we can do nothing. Without God, we are not considered righteous. We are considered to be a sinner. We, we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So what they do, they motivate people and they speak to people because why? They got a yacht. Maybe they got four or five cars. And so people believe that what they're saying about life is true. Even if they're saying a man with a man is okay and a woman with a woman is okay. And even after they're toasting with their champagne and they're getting drunk and they're going to parties and they're going to clubs. Yet people pay them millions of dollars for what they have to say because why? They see the materialistic world. They see the external. They see that that is going to perish. That that one day won't mean nothing because it is certain we brought nothing into this world and it's certain we can take nothing out. And usually those people will receive those motivational speakers and reject the preacher and reject the one who's called to tell man that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Now, we have to understand that principles will work for anybody that will work them. And God's word is full of godly principles. And all we need to do is believe God's word, believe God's report. 
Let me go on and talk a little deeper here. Let's go to Luke 19 verses five and six. Luke 19 verses five and six. It says, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Now notice, Zacchaeus was a very rich man, very wealthy, doing very good, but he opened up his heart to receive Jesus Christ. Jesus did not pull on him, did not tug on him. All Jesus did was speak words. Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I was asking God, amen, the other day. I was saying, God, what is the problem? We have books on healing and other things and, and, and all this information about how to walk in power and walk in glory and walk in victory. And I could only see that the only problem is that people reject the right words and receive the wrong words. They rejecting life giving words from the word and opening themselves up to words of Satan, words of the devil. And this is what the devil is doing. This is why he's killing people, destroying people's lives, rape and murder, crime, all kinds of stuff is happening because people are not opening up to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not open to what men and women who are called to tell men and women that it's time for you and me to conform to the likeness of Jesus and conform to being like Christ and not being like the world or the ungodly. All right, let's look at John 1 verses 11 through 13. Look at this. He came unto his own. Jesus did. What was his own? The Jewish people. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Wait a minute. Receive him how? Eat his body? No, no, no. Receive his words. Receive what he was saying. When they received what he was saying, they were receiving him. When they rejected what he was saying, they were rejecting him. Ah, men have received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, or authority to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the will, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So the way to be born again is through receiving words, receiving the right words, rejecting the wrong words, rejecting wrong words, receiving right words. Shout out to Donna Davis, Betty Pender, and Arthur Williams. All right, Arthur, good to know you're watching, man. Amen. Went to school with my brother and they played basketball and all that together. I went to school with his older brother then. Amen. Shelton. All right, let's go to John 17 and 8. John 17 and 8. Listen at this. For I have given unto them the words. This is Jesus talking, talking to his disciples, talking to the father rather about his disciples. He said, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me and they, the disciples, the apostles, they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee and they have believed that thou didst send me. Now, again, oftentimes some people miss out because they have a spirit of familiarity. Some husbands miss out because they miss the wisdom of their wives because they're familiar. Some wives miss out because they have the, the spirit of familiarity. Some great apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers can't help their own wife, can't help their own spouse. Can't help their own children. Why? The spirit of familiarity. Can't help their own brother. Can't help their own cousin. Can't help their own relative. The spirit of familiarity. 
and go somewhere else, though, and kapow, miracles happen. Transformation happens. Why? Because the person received their words. They're not looking at them according to the flesh. They're not looking at them according to the natural. They're open to the word of the Lord. And so when that person speaks the word of the Lord, they're getting deliverance. They're getting an impact from that word and they're getting open opportunities. They get all kinds of stuff. Remember, God is no respecter of persons, but people are. And some people will reject you and reject your words. You can't help them. But those who receive you and receive your word. Remember, Jesus had some people who rejected him. It says he came unto his own and his own received him not. There are some black people who miss out on the wisdom and the knowledge and the impartation that I could give to them. And I can go to somebody, I go to a church where the pastor is white and the people are white and they open up. They receive. Guess what? They're going to get what they need. And here's another person going to stay broke, going to stay busted, going to stay down in the dump, going to stay depressed because they won't receive the words that will bring them eternal life or bring them to victory. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We have 13 powerful books, 13, 13 books that can bring change and can bring deliverance. Amen. And a lot of times I go to uh, ministries where I have white people in them and they buy the books like hotcake. We went to Seattle, Washington. Amen. And if, I mean, my wife and I were the only black faces there other than the pastor who was black and his wife. Basically, all the rest of the people, most of the rest of the people there were white. Amen. But those white people bought, I mean, they bought everything. Amen. They were buying books left and right. Why? They were receiving the word. They were getting their breakthrough. They were getting their deliverance. Even while I was teaching the word, they were hungry for it, thirsty for it. They got it. Remember? To get. That's what the word receive means. To lay hold of, to take hold of, to grip with your hand. Hallelujah. Receive the word. Look at James chapter one. If you, here's a beautiful verse, two verses. James chapter one, verses 20 and 21 says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. The engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Y'all see that? Maybe you're having a little technical problem, but everything is okay. All right. James 1 and 21. Amen. Says, wherefore lay upon all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. So the word delivers the will, the mind, the emotions. It will deliver you, but it's got to be received. Whenever the preacher or teacher or apostle or prophet or evangelist or pastor or teacher is up there teaching that word, you got to receive it. If you receive it, you will get delivered. Remember Psalms 107 and verse 20, it says he sent. His word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. What did he send? His word. What did Moses come doing? Speaking the word. And people said, who made you a judge? Who made you a rule over us? They were rejecting Moses at first. And Moses was sent by God to speak to Pharaoh and help the people of God get out of bondage. Help the people of God get out of Egypt, which is a shadow and a picture of sin. So we are sent to help men not just get a new car, not just get more money. All of that is good. But to help men and women get out of sin, come out of darkness into the marvelous light. We're trying to help men and women get ready to die and to meet the Lord. To get ready for death. Death is coming at all of us. 
we are closer to dying now. Amen. If we are over 30 and 40 and 50 years old, because amen, most people now are not living to be 140, 120, 200 years old. No. Amen. So we understand, amen, that, hey, we have to redeem the time. We have to now occupy till Jesus come. We have to transact business in his name. And every moment is valuable. Every moment is precious. You and I have to value this, these moments and make sure that we maximize them, that we get the most out of them. Y'all remember a long time ago, Bishop Jake wrote a book. I got on my bookshelf, among other books, maximizing the moment. Amen. All right. Let's look at Acts chapter two, verses 12 through 16. Acts chapter two, verses 12 through 16 says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judah, or Judea, and all ye that dwell in, at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. The word words there is the Greek word rhema. He's speaking by the Holy Spirit. He's bringing out something that the Holy Spirit is revealing to him at this moment. For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So Peter is telling these people that, hey, we're not drunk with natural wine. This is spiritual wine. We're not drunk like you suppose. We haven't been drinking like you think we've been drinking and what you think we've been drinking of. But Joel, years ago, spoke of the fact that in the last days, God will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, that our sons and our daughters will prophesy, that old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions and upon the handmaids and upon his servants, God will pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. So that what, that's what was taking place in Acts chapter two. But that the hearken, that to receive, that to open up, that to listen to the words of Peter. And the Bible said, they that gladly receive what Peter had to say, they got baptized, not all of them, but some of them, some believed, but then some didn't. So we know that rejecting words that are wrong and receiving words that are right will put you over the top. Hallelujah. Think about it. The, the, the weatherman doesn't sweat it. The weatherman just come up and tell you what? Well, tomorrow, the forecast is going to be this. Then they tell you what the next two or three days is going to be. He doesn't jump. He doesn't even sweat. All he's doing is speaking words and people receive those words and dress accordingly and manage or set up their day in accordance to what the weatherman said. What is the weatherman doing? Does he have an anointing? Does he have the Holy Spirit? No. The weatherman is just up there talking and people are receiving his words. Now, and then a lot of preachers wearing themselves out, killing themselves almost because they don't understand that it doesn't take all that. What you got to do is preach the word and people either can receive it and receive life or they can reject it and stay in the death cycle. Rejecting the wrong words and receiving the right words is what we got to do in this hour. Shout out to Leroy, Pin the Grass, Renee Franklin, glad you're watching, Ladorius Leonard, and Prophetess Sylvia Anderson, glad to know that all of you all are watching. Look at Proverbs 13 and 13. Proverbs 13 and 13, powerful verse. Proverbs 13 and 13. Listen at this. It says, whoso, that means it doesn't matter whether you're black, white, rich, or poor, light skin, dark skin, doesn't matter whether you are a Native American, doesn't matter whether you're uh, uh, Asian, it doesn't matter. Whoso despises, 
the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So if I reverence the word of God, if I reverence the commands of God, I'm going to be rewarded with victory. I'm going to be rewarded. So we have to understand that rejecting, again, the wrong words and receiving the right words is critical. It's critical. In fact, years ago, I wrote a book called The Blessings of Rejection. Amen. And I talk about 10 reasons why we face rejection and 14 blessings that come out of being rejected because the same stone, the Bible said that the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone. What are they doing? They rejected Jesus' word. They call him Beelzebub. That means Lord of the flies. They say he hath a devil. They say he was blaspheming. And Jesus was coming with words to set men free. Words that would bring life to them. Words that would give them a shift of a lifetime. Hallelujah. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Mark this one down. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Here, Paul is writing to the saints at Thessalonica. He's saying, For this cause, we're thanking God without ceasing. Watch this. Because when ye received the word of God, which you heard of us, received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. See, the word will not work in the lives of people who doubt. The word has to be mixed with faith. In them that hear it. And Paul is saying to these saints at Thessalonica, you receive the word like it really needs to be received. You didn't receive it like it's the words of just an ordinary man. You received it like it really is, like it is the word of God. God talking to man, God expressing to man what he wants done in the earth, God expressing to man what the will of God is for mankind. And that's what we got to know. That, hey, we don't care if a billionaire or a trillionaire says, hey, it's okay to drink vodka. It's okay to drink Corona beer. It's okay to do this. We shut all that out because we understand the word of God forbids it. The word of God said, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Pastor Reese is going to correct the word rejection after we go off so you can see it. Okay. She was rushing, 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 (laughs) rushing. (laughs) All right. Let's go to Acts 2, 38 through 41. Acts 2, verses 38 through 41. We know Peter began to preach the word to them people, told them to hearken to his word. The Bible said, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Watch verse 40. And with many other words, there it is again, rhema. The word, words here in the Greek is the word rhema. Did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Watch verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wait a minute. Peter is speaking. Nobody concerned about how big his house is. Nobody concerned about how much money he got. 
All they're doing is opening up to right words. They recognize that the Jesus that we destroy is now the head of the corner. That the one that we thought was dead is alive. And because of him, the Holy Spirit can be received. They gladly received the words of Peter and were baptized. See, Satan again is working overtime to make people doubt preachers, doubt teachers of the word of God. He's working overtime. He's using these forums to create a stage and a platform for wrong words to be received. And we need to know that God has this platform so that right words can be received and wrong words can be rejected. But some people are open up to all kinds of foolishness. People, amen, we need to reject the wrong words and receive the right words. We need to know that, hey, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. We need to know that hatred is not the way with God, that God is love and we shouldn't be discriminated against or hated or rejected because of our color. We should be people who understand that we don't reject others because of their color, because we all came from one blood, one man. We came out of one man, Adam, that first man. Out of him, we came. We were born in that first Adam, and we got to be born again in the last Adam. Thank God for the last Adam that made it possible for us to get a new life, to get a changed life, a saved life, a victorious life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to Acts 8 verses 14 through 17. All right. Shout out to Veronica and Michael. All right, Michael. And shout out to Antoine Scott. I hope you're listening tonight. We need to understand that rejecting wrong words. See, many people, they listen at the wrong thing. Why don't you listen and receive the word of God? Isaiah said, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has believed our report? That, hey, a virgin gave birth to the Messiah. And as a result of the Messiah, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Let's look at Acts 8, verses 14 through 17. It says, now when the apostles, which were at Jerusalem, heard that Samaria, see, heard that Samaria, the whole city, had received the word of God. They sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Ain't that powerful? That a whole city opened up and received the word of God. Hallelujah. More things can happen in Tarboro if people receive the word. Well, you know, that, that's just what the preacher said. That, I, that he talking about that tithe. And I don't think you got a tithe. I don't think, I don't see you got. Why you got to give God a 10%? Why you got to come to the church? Why you ain't got to. In fact, people now are on these platforms preaching against going to the house of God, going back into the house of God. And the Bible plainly tells us that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Oh, yeah, we can read the Bible at home. Oh, yeah, we can pray at home. But God wants us to get together and assemble together as the body. Amen. Because why? There he commands a blessing. 
Behold, you know Psalm 133, how good and plenty for brethren to dwell together in unity. Iron sharpening iron. We need to know that that ointment of that unity, there's no oil like that in the world. It's like that oil that ran down from Aaron's head to his beard to his skirt. Hallelujah. So we need to shut out wrong words, reject them, and receive right words. Receive right words. Look at John 12, 46 through 50. John, the 12th chapter, 46 through 50, Jesus is speaking. He said, I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. And if any man, here you go, and if any man hear or listen to my words and believe not, I judge him, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Watch verse 48. He that rejected me and received not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. So that's why we got to keep preaching the word. Because the word that we preach would be judgment against people because God can say to them, you heard the word. I sent my messenger to you to preach the word to you. To tell you the word of God. To speak life to you. To speak hope to you. To speak victory to you. Hallelujah. Look what he said. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father has sent me. He gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. Preachers are called to preach the word. We're called to preach the word. Does that line up with the word, what you're saying, preacher? Does that line up with the word, what you're saying, woman of God? Because we preach the word so people can receive the word and the word can cause them to bear fruit. The word is that seed going into their heart, going into good ground so they can bring forth much fruit. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You can't be fruitful without the seed, which is the word of God. So the word is very, very important. Look at John 13 verses 18 through 21. He said, I speak not of all of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me and hath, hath lift up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come that when it come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. Notice what Jesus said. So if a person don't receive me and I'm just sent by God, they're rejecting Jesus. <coughs> He said it. He that receive it, whosoever I send, receive it me. He that receive it me, receive it him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. See, Jesus knew. He said, now when I say it, you're going to know it when it come to pass that I'm not speaking of myself. Jesus knew that one of them was going to betray him. We know who that was, Judas. Judas Iscariot. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Now we understand, again, that we are warned in scriptures. Paul tells us to charge them that are rich that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but that they be Willing and ready to distribute. 
Paul speaks of the fact that if anybody is making you covet after stuff, he said, from such you turn away because he knew that many people had erred from the faith. Many people won't even say the truth because they might offend somebody who's a big tither, who's a big giver, who give a whole lot to their work or to their calling. So you don't want to offend them. So when people get got a lot of money and stuff, they are asked questions that they know biblically, biblically, biblically they should not be doing. But they'll put a preacher on the spot because they know that millions of people are watching that preacher tonight because they're on that particular program that's highly popular. And they already know that there are people who are following that ungodly person who's doing the interview. They're following their lifestyle and they got an influence over the minds and the hearts of people. So then they ask the preacher stuff like this. Is it OK? Uh, you a preacher. Is it OK if a man be with a man? Now, they know that millions are watching and they know that there are people who are supporting them financially. And in order to not offend those folks or to make those folks mad, they set that up to make the preacher sweat it out and be scared. But we ought to be bold as a lion. My brother been teaching about bold. We ought to be bold enough to say, wait a minute. It ain't what I think. It ain't what you think. It ain't why I feel about it or you feel about it. It's what God says. And God says it's an abomination. God says it's a reprobate mind. God wants that person who is a male to be with a female. He wants them to turn their heart towards him so that he can fix them and cause them to be a holy man of God or a holy woman of God. We must. Are there throw stuff at you? Well, it's all right for us to drink every now and then or smoke every now and then. See, I know because I was on a program years ago when they would ask pastors questions. And a lot of times they would send questions about gambling. They would send questions about is it OK to smoke cigarettes? Is it OK to drink beer? See, see what they're doing is they're asking questions that they know that the average preacher is scared to answer because he might lose some people because some people might not never come back to his local assembly. Well, he don't believe in drinking beer. Well, I, I drink beer when I get a little sad or when I feel like getting high. And all these other movie stars are showing beer commercials and glamorizing it. Oh, my God. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? He's crazy. I wouldn't be under him. No, that's the man of God you should follow because he's trying to tell you that, hey, you don't need that. You need the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Get full of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in another tongue. And God's power will cause you to move in victory and breakthrough like you've never seen it before. Peter talked about this new wine. Hallelujah. See, drinking and dancing, all this stuff. Amen. Doing it at home and in your party. See, this, we must make a stand. And so to be what they call popular, to be popular is not what preaching the gospel is all about. Do you not know that Peter and John were put in prison for preaching. It's not a popularity contest. It's about turning men away from their idolatry or their idols and causing them to embrace God. Cause them to look away from the gods that their fathers have been serving all this time. See, they used to getting drunk and seeing drunk people all around them. They used to getting mad and cursing folks out where you and I got to let them know that, hey, God says, let your conversation be seasoned with salt, 
that it may minister grace to the hearers. We as Christians must tell people that cursing and swearing is not the right way for the believer. Amen. We have to repent if we do it and say we're sorry. Forgive us, Lord. We will not do that again. Help us not to do it again because we don't want to practice sinning. We practice righteousness. Hallelujah. Now look at this as I bring this last verse to a close here. Matthew 10 verses 40 and 41. Matthew 10, 40, 41. Amen. He that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Hallelujah. See, he's talking about receiving. He's talking about not rejecting right words, but receiving right words. A prophet many times got their heads cut off. It wasn't popular to be a prophet and it ain't popular now because a real prophet of God is going to speak and point people away from the wrong thing and point them toward God. A prophet is a pointer. He's going to point you to God. Aim you at God, to look at God. Hallelujah. I wrote a book called Let the Prophet Speak. Show us the way, show us our way. Tremendous book. But here's what you need to understand. We have to reject wrong words. And I'm telling you, this generation is being flooded with wrong words. Being flooded with words that are evil, words that are corrupt, Words that are deadly. Think about it, my brothers and sisters. How many people are getting in a car on a weekend, drunk, can't hardly see the road, don't know where they're going, and driving down the road and killing somebody's relatives? Why? Because people glamorize it. They glamorize it. Make it look cool and smooth. And all they got to do, watch this, is get an entertainer or an athlete to glamorize it. Think about it. Westbrook, tremendous basketball player. I respect him on the basketball court. They got him advertising what? Hennessy. Hennessy. Why? Call him Westbrook. Now think about it. You know good and well if basketball players drink all year long, they ain't going to be able to run down that court like they do. But they, but because media know that people are watching, they know that people are watching these commercials that during the game and everything else, they're going to advertise Hennessy. They're going to advertise. They're going to let Snoop Dogg advertise Corona beer. All of this getting in the minds and the psyche of men. Why? Because these people got some money. Because these people got nice houses. Because these people drive nice cars. And soon as a preacher who's not drinking, not cursing, not going out here living crazy, gets up. Oh, why he got a jet? Why he got a car? Oh, how he get it? Must be taking all your money. See, why? To kill our influence. To destroy the lives of people. Because he knows if I can get, say no, if I can get people to reject right words and receive wrong words the same way I got in there like a snake with the lives of Adam and his wife Eve, I can get in the lives of children, I can get in the lives of families, and I can rip a family apart because of alcoholism, because of wife beating, because of child molestation. I can wipe people's lives out. It's a work of the devil. It's time for us to reject wrong words and receive right words. The Bible said it this way in 2 Chronicles. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe 
his prophets, so shall you prosper. Hallelujah. Do you believe the prophets? Do you believe what the word of God says? Hallelujah. I'm not just talking about what he said about a new car, or the money in the bank. I'm talking about do you believe the word that he's preaching and teaching you that will help you be what God wants you to be. It's time for us to reject wrong words and receive right words and grow to be powerful in the kingdom. I hope that's what you're doing. I hope that's what you're excited about. Every time you tune in here, open your heart up and receive the word of God. It's called the entrance of God's word. It gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. God's word makes all the difference. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know what set me free. It was the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The word of God will set you free. It'll do it. Thank you for listening tonight. So appreciate you. I hope you will take this message, go over these scriptures, look at them, meditate on them, because Jesus, Jesus came with words, words, words. That's what he came, preaching, words. In fact, the Bible said Jesus was the word made flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, wait a minute. Here I am speaking the words of the Father. Y'all reject them. Somebody else come and speaking their own words. You receive them. That's how people are. We come preaching the Bible, talking to you about the Bible, telling you what the Bible says, and you reject that. And some man who's speaking out of his own head, out of his own imagination, talking about there's more than one way to God. There's only one way to God. There's only one way to God. I'm sorry if that doesn't uh, 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 help you at all. Amen. But it's the truth. There's only one way to God. Only, only one way to get to God. There ain't many ways to come to God. There's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus knew he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father lest they come through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to God. Hallelujah. Not through Muhammad, not through some other prophet, but through Jesus Christ. That's the truth. Now, the way for you to come to God tonight, sir, and you to come to God tonight, ma'am, is through Jesus. If you're not saved, you need to get saved. Give your heart to Jesus Christ because as sure as you are watching this program, one day, you will die. And the Bible says it's appointed to man once to die after death, judgment. The only way to escape the penalty for sin is through Jesus Christ. And you want to escape that penalty. So give us a call at 252-563-5382. That number of the call is 252-563-5382. I want you to give me a call after this program go off. I'll be glad to pray with you, help you, amen, lead you to the Lord, lead you to the Lord, help you begin a wholesome personal relationship with God. Also, these messages can be viewed again right here on Facebook. Continue to watch them, amen, or you can check them out on YouTube. Also, it's very, very important, right down these times, we're here each and every Tuesday night at 7.30, each and every Thursday at seven o'clock. This is on Facebook. You can watch us live on Facebook right now every Tuesday at 730, every Thursday at seven o'clock. And right now, this Sunday, again, we'll be back in the building at 10 a.m. That's right. If you anywhere near Newness of Life Christian Center, be there. Meet us at N-O-L-C-C. -C. The address is 936 Admiral Avenue in the wonderful city of Tarboro. Now listen, the service starts at 10 promptly. That means, watch, this is very important. That means you don't need to drive up in the parking lot at 10. That means you need to be already in your seat, ready to worship, ready to enter in, amen, with your brothers and sisters in the presence of God, worshiping glorifying him, singing, and letting the Holy Spirit minister to you through these great, great singers that God has blessed our 
assembly with, Pastor Reese and Sister Reese and Deacon Gaston and others. Amen. Join in as we do. Also, there are several ways to give to Newness of Life Christian Center. If you need a church to give to or a group to give to, I know no better place than NOLCC. We are good ground. We are doing what's right with the finances. And I'm telling you, amen, God has been good to us. We have 1.4 acres of property that bought and paid for, 11 acres bought and paid for on several TV stations, several radio stations. Amen. God has been good to us as a church. Now, listen, you can mail your check or your money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. That address again, Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. All right. Do that. And, and also you can give. Here's another way you can do it. You can give by downloading the Give Plus Church app. Download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 and you can sow a seed that way. Again, download the Give Plus Church app. Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886. Newness of Life Christian Center going to pop up and you can sow a seed that way. All right. Now, if you would like to give to my wife and I, Personally, here's how you do it. You got to go to your cash app. Now, there's been some changes in our cash app. You got to pay attention to me. Listen at me. It used to be one thing. Now it is this. And it's very, very important that you understand it. It is now you got to throw out the old one. That's right. The other one. Amen. We had to make some changes and we did. And uh, go to the cash app. Hit your dollar sign and hit the, the letter R. The letter E, the word V, uh -uh, the, letter v. the letter V, that's what I said. The oh, the word V. Okay. Hit the letter R E V sharp, S H A R P E. Amen. That's not Reverend Sharp. It stands for Reese and Van and all that. Okay. Hit R E V sharp, S H A R P E. Okay. That's what I said. R E V S H A R P E. Right. It's a dollar sign. R-E-V-S-H-R-S-H-A-R-P-E. OK. All right. Now. <clears throat> and of course, we would appreciate that. OK. You can also call and get your books. Don't forget. Good books are very, 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 very necessary for you to grow and be like the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you need to read. If you don't read, you won't lead. So get a get these good books. Our latest three I'm going to tell you about real quickly. Death, a need to understand. Good gracious. Man, you need that. So many people need to understand. So they'll stop saying crazy stuff like God took your mama, or God took your cousin, or God took your best friend, or God plucked the flower. No, no, no. You need to get, get this book. Death, a need to understand. Also, long distance runner, running to receive the prize, telling you how to run with a renewed mind, run with uh, responsibility, run with right connections, run with your team, run with purpose, drive, and passion. All this to tell you how to run so you can receive the prize and let the prophet speak, show us our way. These are the latest three of the 13 books we've written. Also, I want to tell you about this book because Father's Day is coming up. It'll be here before we know it. It's the 20th of this month. And I'm telling you, a good book to read is I Am My Brother's Keeper, Empowering Men to Take Their Place. This is a good book for your father, for your nephew, for your cousin, for your uncle. Get this book, I Am My Brother's Keeper. They'll love you for buying it for them for a Father's Day gift. If you're a man that's already got it, amen. Get one for your brother, your cousin, your nephew, amen, or your uncle. Amen. Young teenage boys need it. Amen. It'll be a blessing to you. All right. Ladies, we didn't leave you out. We have a book called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. Again, call our office. Find out about those 13 books. The number to call is 252-641-0098. Thank you for watching tonight. More importantly, thank you for not rejecting the word. Well, these are right words. Reject wrong words. Receive right words and watch your life flourish. Watch your life grow. Okay. Don't forget. This Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, 
this Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. Amen. Only 30 minutes only. 30 minutes only. This past Sunday, we only gave you 30 minutes. You can go back and watch that on Facebook. It's, it's entitled, amen, called Shut Out the Noise. Good gracious. You're talking about a word. Everybody who's trying to be somebody and have something in life, you need that message. It's called Shut Out the Noise. Amen. Go back and watch it on Facebook or YouTube. 30 minutes. That's all. 30 minutes of your time. You'll be glad you did. Until next time, we'll see you, amen, Thursday at 7 o'clock right here on Facebook Live. God bless. Bye.